Hey everyone, excited to be back for this week's edition of Frequently Asked Questions for Commercial Real Estate. In today's video, what I wanna do is talk about a topic that's extremely pertinent, especially for those who are looking to buy commercial real estate, and that is, what exactly are contingencies within a contract? Uh, now, in this video, we're gonna explain what exactly contingencies are, the different types of contingencies, and how they're utilized within a contract to ensure that you're actually making the right decision for you and your business. Now, before we dive into this video, I would greatly appreciate if you can like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and ensures more and more people can hear this message and learn about the many facets of commercial real estate. So now you've done that, go ahead and like and subscribe below and also click the notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. That would be awesome. Let's go ahead and dive into this episode. All right, so the, the question is, what exactly are contingencies within a contract? So. What a contingency is, is it gives you the opportunity to back out of a contract if in fact one of these criteria are not met. And there's different types of contingencies that you would typically include in a contract. Literally, you can include a contingency for anything, but the most common are as follows. Number one is an inspection contingency or a physical contingency, meaning that it gives you the right to go to a property and inspect the major mechanicals, the roof, really anything you want to regarding the property and make sure that it is in fact what you're looking for as far as an opportunity is concerned. Along with that, there's typically a financing contingency, meaning that you have the right to seek out uh, a loan for whatever terms that you decide are, are appropriate. And if you, for some reason, aren't able to secure financing for that property, you have the right to back out of a contract and not forfeit your earnest money deposit that you put forth at the beginning of the signing of the purchase agreement. So that's number two. And then number three, is an environmental contingency. This is one that I often include in my contracts, which gives you the right to perform environmental uh, testing and assessments to confirm, in fact, that there are no environmental issues on the property because that could be quite costly long-term if, in fact, you uh, don't know about it and then all of a sudden down the road you're having to remediate the site as a result of you not knowing so, not doing so. And also, you know, one of the things that we kind of touch on, especially when it comes to investment property, is as part, as part of the uh, financing contingency, usually you'll incorporate you know, a, a criteria saying that you need to have the seller furnish all the financial documentation pertinent to the property. This may include tenant leases, uh, you know, any other pertinent information like bank statements or uh, financial analysis, et cetera. So you can confirm it on your end to make sure that in fact, you're getting sold what you're expecting uh, for the, that particular property. So those are just some of the type of contingencies out there. They're extremely important to include in your contract because it does give you the right to back out of a contract without losing your earnest money deposit. Now, we may have talked about this in previous videos, but an earnest money deposit is, it's a good faith deposit, meaning that if you sign a purchase agreement and the seller signs a purchase agreement, typically you'll sign the purchase agreement under the auspices that you will actually have a, a, a good faith deposit that will be put in an escrow account uh, and if, in fact, you get to a point where your contingency timeline expires and you don't close on the property, the seller would then receive that good faith deposit because you didn't satisfy uh, the contingencies uh, of that particular contract. And so the whole point of, of having contingencies in place is to avoid that scenario taking place. And so if you're working with a commercial real estate agent, they will know to include these contingencies within a contract. If you are not working with one and you're looking to buy a commercial property, I would highly encourage you to speak to one so that you understand the different things that you can do as a buyer to be able to cover yourself if you in fact go under a contract with a property and then ultimately decide it's not a good fit for you. So if you're looking in the Louisville market to buy commercial real estate, I would highly encourage you to reach out to me. I'm a commercial real estate agent in town and have helped a variety of different business owners and investors secure commercial property for the, either their business use or for investment purposes. If you want to reach out to me, feel free to do so. My number is 502-536-7315, or you can reach me via email at rafaelacrosantigroup.com. Along with that, if you like this channel, please like and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm that ensures more and more people can hear this message and learn about the many facets of commercial real estate. So like and subscribe below. Click the notification bell to be notified of future videos. And thanks again for so much for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time.